Good morning. It's me, Mikey Pipes, and Air Force Nun. Today is Monday, July 18th, 2022. We're on our way to a service call over here in Great Neck, which is on the North Shore, the Gold Coast of Nassau County, Long Island. Customer has an indoor pool room and it's 88 degrees. Text me over the weekend while I was in East Hamptons. East Hampton, sorry, not plural, East Hampton. And I said, I got you, bro. I got you. Be there Monday morning, bright and early. We'll see what's going on. He's got a, a desert air HVAC system with a remote condenser. Let's go see what's going on. Stay tuned. Thumbs up in advance. Shut up. Thoughts and feedback down in the comment section down below. All right, so it's 82, set to cool. Set point is 78. And there's the pool. All right, multiple linear diffusers. Let's take a peek inside. It's got a little salt creep on the automatic cover. See, we have a return there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight linear diffusers. Nice, nice swim pool here. Very nice. Let's go see the equipment. All right. Yep, this is the house. So, let's put my shoes back on. Easier than wearing booties, taking the shoes off, you know? All right, let's see. So here's the equipment. A little bit of background. This system has had several leaks over the over the years and generally on pressure switch. But let's take a look inside here, see what's going on. There's a, uh, a backup stay right pool heater that he doesn't use because it's just, it stays nice and toasty. All right. And when it gets too warm in this room, this ductless kicks on and takes care of things. All right, Air Force Nun, let's grab the uh, flat screwdriver and take a peek. There it is, Desert Air. Let's see what's going on in here. Let's see what's going on up in here. No, just 90 degrees. Okay. So we have some contactors, relays, wiring, same pressure switch right here. So first things first, let's see if I see any oil residue, new oil residue. Oh, so it looks like our high side pressure switch went out. Hmm. The high side pressure switch went out. You saw that, right? We have a compressor in there. Let's go take a look at the remote condenser. Okay. So my outdoor remote condenser is running. I had my money on condenser uh, fan but she's running she's running and we're discharging some heat so let's take a look at the uh, capacitor for such make sure that's within range and if not I guess we're golden not really if you ain't testing you're guessing all right we removed the fan guard and the fan blade and we have a five microfarad uh run capacitor here so we're going to take that out and test it see if she's still five we're trying to figure out a reason why obvious reason why our system went out on high pressure limit we'll take out some of the debris in here so we're going to take the needle nose take that off and then test it all right we have 4.2 4.2. So we're looking for 10% is acceptable 
and we have 4.2. 10% of five would be 0.5. So at this point, we're gonna replace this five microfarad run capacitor for this remote condenser fan motor. I can't believe that just broke. Look at that. And that's the Weehaw. Yeah. Weehaw? What the front door? Listen, I wasn't putting a whole lot on it either. I don't know. Maybe you don't know, realize your own strength. Maybe. But, but it's yeah. designed to withstand that. Come on. Like, what's up with that, Weehaw? Yeah. You know what? Now we got a thumbnail. The broken Weehaw. Yeah, the Weehaw broke, but at least it's tight. It's tight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's secure the fan guard, fan blade guard back. And then uh, we'll turn power on. And then we're going to install a... Uh, the Rector Seal RSH50 surge protector on the indoor unit. All right, since a lot of the riveted bolt holders are gone, we're gonna put some new screws in, but I almost forgot the cover. Put the cover back on, like that. What they say, no glove, no love. You know? Unless you're, you know, risky. Yeah, risky, risky. All right, so we are gonna add our surge protection device right here to this main disconnect panel. I turned the main breaker off for, well, the breaker off for this. At first, it said pool. There was a 20 amp, there was a 15 amp, and we still had power there. And then I kept looking, and then I saw a breaker labeled Desert Air. Was it it? That was it. That was it. That's crazy. <laughs> so we got the rector seal. We're going to wire this in and protect this machine. Very, very sensitive electronics here and it's very hard to get parts for it, so it's a good idea to protect the client's property. They have a surge protector there on the Aqualink Jandy RS automation control, and now we're gonna put one here. Protect against surges. Surges. You can take that knockout out. You can handle it. Maybe. Find out. It's kind of oh, you're not, you're not gonna get it that way. Oh yeah, good luck with that. Okay, now you're being retarded. <laughs> Here, let me show you how to do it. Let me show you how it's done. Danielson. Oh, that's, that's Air Force not actually. I mean, that's the other thing. How's that working for you? It's not. Yeah. You really showed me how it was done. I'm going to show you. All right. Just stay tuned, bitch. The problem is, I need a short, I need a shorter one. That's right. All right. That's right. See? Point proven. Made it happen. That bus moves. I'm struggling getting the ring on. Oh, Parkinson's is acting up today, apparently. Fuck you. Oh, does he got it? I think you got it. Oh, yeah. Off camera, oh, it only yeah. took him, you know, 15 tries, but. Yeah. Perfection. Rome wasn't built overnight. All right, so we're shorten them up a little bit. Yep. It says in the manual, yep. keep the leads as short as possible. And according to the manual, you can also put them on a single lug. So that's what we're doing. As long as they're secure, we are good. So I have L1, L2 on the load side. Okay, boom, boom. Now we do the ground. Okay, let's get the ground in there. Stick you in there, get in there. There you go. And now tighten up the ground. Come on, baby. Okay. Did you get that in there? I nope, didn't, I didn't. I said, didn't look like it. Totally missed that one. Let's try that again. If I ain't showing it, I ain't doing it. You know how these guys are. Now that's in there. Yeah, that looks like it's in there. Okay. Good. There we go. Excellent. Put the cover back on. 
like that. Throw a plug in. And now we have surge protection for Ooh. the desert air. Okay. Our manifold hoses are hooked up to the low side and the high side. Compressor is running. Let's take a look at our pressures. And for the system that we have here, it's just about normal. All right, we're gonna take a look at that high side. We'll make sure we don't get too high on that. And that will give us a reason why that high pressure switch went out. So let's keep an eye on this. Make sure she don't keep climbing like that. That's what she does. No bueno. You know what is bueno? Let me show them what's bueno. This is bueno. This is what you call a pipe doctor. Perfect, perfected install. See, that's me. All right, it's been running for about five minutes. Our pressure is still climbing. That's no bueno. I bet you our outdoor remote e condenser coil is dirty. I bet you it is. I bet you it is. Let's pull power here. Okay. And let's go take a walk outside. It's raining. Is it raining? Yep. Fudge! Let's go Bosch, ladies and gentlemen. Oh yeah, she's raining. <laughs> she's raining. Let's take a peek underneath this coil. Oh, fuck. Wanna get the... Again. Oh my god. Absolutely disgusting. Look at that. Absolutely disgusting. Holy shit. I know it's been a couple years. Oh. Oh, you got the uh the subco HVAC uh technician umbrella. Aren't you smart? It's a little, little short, but that's using your noggin. Alright. So let's pull power. And yes, I should be pulling the power with the my right hand, my left hand behind my back. So because if power goes down that way, you know, bzz. Listen, if you're getting shocked, the only thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kick you as hard as I can. <laughs> with a with a with a ten foot pole? Uh, I'm just gonna kick you. <laughs> Listen, I'm I'm sure that the kick will hurt a lot less than being shocked for a minute or two. Agreed. All right, let's get the the drill with the 516th, take these two screws off. We'll spin off the condenser fan guard and I will get some solution ready. Let's find a hose or uh, a faucet. See if you can see. Maybe. Oh, oh it's wrought iron. Is it stay? No, but you need to be over there though. Yeah, no, but the problem is it's short. Oh well, we tried. <laughs> oh, just don't let it touch. Just don't let the wind blow into it. <laughs> All right, I took the the Viper, the Venom Pack by Refrigeration Technologies. This is the maximum strength condenser cleaner, and I got very liberal, as you can see here. And we got from inside down. We also got a little bit from the underside, All right? And now we're gonna rinse this, put her back together, making sure we put our, our glove, uh, glove over the hub of the condenser fan blade, and then we'll let her run and see what kind of pressures we're working with. Right now, Christian, AKA Air Force Nun, is rinsing out the new Calgon coil gun container and applicator. I'm gonna run that through with clear water, fresh water, to rinse out any of the chemicals from the applicator and the canister. And then we'll give this remote condenser a very, very good rinse. And while Air Force Nun is rinsing the new cow gun, taking a fish. Oh, let me get your, let me get some feedback from you HVAC guys out there who work on desert air remote condensers for pool rooms so you can condition 
your client space. Let me get your feedback on Desert Air. I only have one customer with the Desert Air and this is them. I have three customers with indoor pools and they all have something different. Let me get your thoughts and feedback down in the comment section below. All right, Air Force None is rinsing the coil. Let's take a peek underneath. She's raining. She's raining. I'm gonna get all that, all that cocky off the bottom of this condensing coil. And hopefully our pressure is returned to normal now that we have unrestricted airflow across the condensing coil. Not bad, and looks like the rain is holding up for us. So, getting the job done. All right, I got my power reinserted. Got the disconnect. Got a little green light on there, as you can see. See, a little green light. We got power. Now it's gonna wait for the startup sequence. We have a TXV in the system, so she's not exactly uh, equalized yet. It takes a little while for that to occur. So let's wait for startup. There's our blower. We're gonna check out the air filter in a minute. Make sure that's clean, but my low side pressure was, was normal, so I'm not concerned about dirty filter, but we're gonna check that anyway. Okay, give us some time for the compressor kick back on. We'll check out our remote condenser. So while I'm waiting for the compressor to kick on, I want to go over the, the manual, especially the, the troubleshooting section, because a good technician will utilize what's available to them. And here we have the Desert Air manual, the installation and operation manual. And I'm going to re return to page 36. Page 36, head pressure too high, All right? Remote condenser problems, which can cause excessive pressures. The first thing, first things first, lack of airflow. And you want to assure that the coil is clean and no airflow restri restrictions exist around the unit. And we also have condenser fan troubleshooting. Um, if you have a condenser fan issue, you can have a defective contactor. Obviously replace the contactor. The fan is cycling on internal protection. You verify motor voltage ensure that the shaft is freely spinning. Uh, the remote condenser jumper could be missing at the dehumidifier. You have the necessary jumper and they even refer you to the section 19. We have a pressure control on active. Now I know that remote condenser has a pressure control which goes on at a certain head pressure. You want to verify the cut in and differ differential settings are correct. Now, if there were service valves out there, make sure that they're closed or not fully open fully open service valves. Okay. Our compressor is now on. Our low side pressure, 120, climbing. High side, 135, and also climbing. Let's check that remote condenser, make sure it came on. All right, so our room is at 78 degrees. Perfect. I just opened up the cover. I wanted to test the water temperature and we're at 82 degrees, not bad. Um, when you have an indoor enclosure like this for a pool, um, if you don't utilize a automatic cover like this one, you have, you have a major evaporation and you have a lot of humidity control to deal with. So if you have an indoor pool, if you got a cover, excellent. I have a, uh, a couple customers who do not have an indoor, uh, an automatic cover in their pools, and it's very, very difficult and very costly to operate. Um, this cover is by Cover Pools. They're a Polaris company, and it works very, very easily. You have a a key control, right? You can take this out if you know if you have young kids or if you don't want any unauthorized use of your pool, and you basically uncover, like, and I'll show you right now. See, and it opens just like that, and then it fully opens. I'll show you guys in a second. He also has a, a swimming or a contraption right here. I don't know if you see that. All right, and this will give you tons and tons of, uh, so you can swim in place. There's so much water going this way and it's, it's pretty, pretty cool. So let's cover up this pool now that the unit is operating. We're just gonna go back to cover cover will close and we have a functional 
desert air system. We had a dirty condensing coil. We had a bad condensing fan capacitor. And we're just letting it cycle and making sure that we don't have any recalls here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed today's video on the desert air HVAC system for this nice, nice, nice couple, nice family over in Great Neck with that incredible indoor pool. Very, very nice. So I hope you found it somewhat educational and hopefully Chris and I entertained you a little bit. If not, go play in traffic and kick rocks, you trolls. <laughs> Catch you in the next one. Until then, be well, God bless, stay safe.